What's going on, guys? So, hopefully we can get through the season, the rest of the season, in this video. Gabe, can you tell us what's behind this, uh, frankly odd move of raising ticket prices mid-season? Well, you know, that was a decision that was made at Mr. Sanderson's request, and it's, uh, it's part of our normal budgeting process. The general idea being that we need to generate more cash flow so we can reinvest in the business and give ourselves some flexibility when it comes to some of the moves we want to make this summer. At the end of the day, it's about putting a better product on the floor and creating a better experience for the fan. If this order came directly from Mr. Sanderson, that would be uh, an unusual step for an owner to take. Like I said, this decision was a result of our standard budgeting process, and that involves a number of participants. So yes, it came from Mr. Sanderson first, but it was by no means something that was done without the consultation of the rest of the staff. Quite frankly, Gabe, this seems to lend uh, some credence to the rumors about some of Mr. Sanderson's businesses. The 90s themed cruises, the fast, casual cinnamon bun chain. Care to comment on any of that, Gabe? I can see that it, you know, that it looks like that way, but to be honest, I share some, uh, some of your concern here, but like Mr. Sanderson, I'm operating from a place where I want what's best for the health of the franchise, and I'm assured by the people of my organization who are better at this accounting stuff than I am, you know, that this is the right way to go. Nobody wants to raise ticket prices, believe me. We're very sensitive to the fact that fans spend their hard-earned money to come see the Bulls, but that's why we feel a duty to, you know, put the best team out there that we can, and we think that this will, you know, this will help with that. I hate my owner. My owner, ugh, he's such a, ugh, whatever. Bulls owner Bob Sanderson still struggling financially. Fans feel the pinch as ticket prices rise. Kristen, I'm about to hit them DMs real fast. Can I do that? Is that possible? Slot, no, slide in DMs? No. That sucks. That should be, that should be an option. What do you got for me today, Noah? All good things, Gabe. All good things. Our boy Freddy Staples killed it in the tournament. Got to the line 19 times in the Elite Eight against Duke. 19 times. They couldn't stop him if their lives depended on it. Any spot on the floor, if he wanted to go there, he got there. Impressive stuff. I'll say, Elite bursts on full display. So was his willingness to draw contact. This kid's not shying away from anything. A bully. I like that. All he did to follow it up was drop 35 on Louisville in the final four, going 4 for 4 from downtown and 8 for 10 inside the arc and 7 for 7 from the line. Damn. He couldn't miss. A classic basket looked like a big old bucket situation. Not a bad shooting line. You're funny, Gabe. You know that? I've been told. He wasn't just chucking, though. In between knocking down every shot inside, he pulled down 6 boards and dished out 9 assists. It was one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen in the turn. What's going on with Petrovic? He's been working on his post game. Team started switching smaller guys onto him in the pick and roll, figuring his lighter frame wouldn't be able to punish the mismatch. And, and they were right, sort of. Do I smell a weakness? That's a first for me when talking about these kids. I wouldn't say that exactly. He struggled a bit at first, anyway. But he's proven to be a quick study. Either that, or he f finally realized he's bigger than a spruce. Now he just turns around and banks in jumpers over the little guys instead of trying to finesse his way around them. So he's doing well. You can't put a wing on him anymore, unless you want to get cooked. And Baldwin? Baldwin's still Baldwin. Kentucky got bounced early, but you saw that team this year. Not sure what happened, but it was an unusually weak freshman class. What, kind of like that year they got beat by Robert Morris in the NIT? That was classic. Still, he darn near put that bunch of bumps on his back. Yeah, I saw. Right, well, Michigan State caught fire from downtown. That short college line. Can't do anything about that. Didn't stop him from trying, though. Had six blocks to go with 18 points and 15 assists, which is even more incredible consider who he was passing to. Yeah, I'm not worried at all about Jackson. The guy's a monster. I've got a couple guys a little further down I'm pretty high on. You got a few more minutes? Let's do it. Odell Shepard, small forward for Ohio State. Might have the quickest first step in the draft. Great athlete, 7'6 wingspan, true two-way player. Great in isolation or out of the pick and roll and just a nasty defender. And any other draft, he'd be a top three player, but he's probably more in the six to eight range this year. Only real knock against him is he's not Freddie Jackson or Mirko. Anyone else? I could go on all day. I love talking to you, Noah, but I got a couple things I need to get done. All right, how about I leave you with one more? Sounds good. John Malcolms, stretch four out of Arizona. 6'10", 37% shooter from downtown. Solid NBA body, active on the glass. Excellent rim protection. 
His handle could be a little tighter, but he really opens up the floor with his shooting. He's a talker, big time, very vocal leader, but he backs it up. Real gym rat type, loves studying film. He'd do great in some of these switch-heavy defenses that you need to keep up with the Golden States of the world. It's looking like he'll be there 10 to 12-ish, easily a top five talented in most drafts. Well, that all sounds pretty exciting, Now, I always appreciate the zest you bring to the job. When you do what you love, it's not a job. You should write fortune cookies. You know, you're not the first person who's told me that. I'm not? My mom used to tell me that. Wasn't being nice, though. She wanted me to be a doctor. Gave me kind of a hard time about not going down that path. But a tree will find its way towards the sun, and a vine will crawl unless it's pruned. Don't know what the fuck that means. Shoot or shoot, Gabe. They don't all go in. You got me there. Alright, well, thanks again. And could you send me some tape on mouthness before you leave today? You got it, boss. I'll have some. I'll have one of the video guys email you some links. We've got it all set up on a Dropbox. Oh my god, Dropbox. So, we're getting close. It's almost over. Thank god. Ready for the season to be done. Hey, Gabe, you got a second? Sure, Jim. I'm not trying to ambush you or anything, but I'm hoping to get some honest answers. All this stuff in the news, right? The, th the 90s themed cruise line going bankrupt, the fast casual cinnamon bun chain I'm performing, ticket price hikes in the middle of the season. I know what you said to the press, Gabe, but what's really going on here? Forget free agents for a second. Are we going to be able to take care of our own guys this summer? I'm worried there will be nothing left in the pot for us. You believe in deja vu, Jim? Sorry, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. It just feels like half my life is spent answering questions about Bob's stupid cruise lines and pastry shops. I appreciate that, but you know, your statements to the press aren't exactly illuminating. I'm coming to you directly so I can hear the truth. I think I'm owed that, Gabe. I'm the head coach for crying out loud. I shouldn't be kept in the dark like this. All right, look, here's what I know for sure. I've been assured that there aren't any real financial problems. The cruise line's going bankrupt. That's all made up for tax purposes. And the ticket hike, well, I tried to steer them away from that, but that was bad. Yeah, no kidding. But I've assured, I've been assured in no uncertain terms that the revenue from the hike in ticket prices has been earmarked for improvements to the team. That includes player salary, both for the guys already here and for, for potential free agents. Hey, look, if you're telling me that's all you know, I'm not going to question you. I just need to hear it from you directly. You know, I can't take what you tell to the press at face value. Of course, Jim, completely understood. Well, thanks for being open and honest with me. That's definitely not a given in my experience. I really do think our relationship is special that way. I can always count on you to be straight with me. Totally agree, and thanks for coming to me. Big fan of these parking lot meetings, huh? I wouldn't say that, but I should have come to you sooner to clear the ace, to, to clear the air, so I'm glad you grabbed me when you did. Communication, boss. That's what I tell the players. It's all about communication. All right, I gotta go pick some, I gotta go pick up some dry cleaning. Catch you later, Jim. Have a good one, Gabe. God, the amount of fucking... Zachary, what can I do for you? I got orders from the top to trim salary, and I'm looking to get Joakim Noah off the books. Wondering if you can help me out. Fuck Joakim Noah. You know I love bad contracts. Where do I sign? Anyone ever tell you you're a funny guy, Gabe? Get on with it. What's the offer? I'm willing to give you Frank... Nilakina? I don't know. Is that how you say it? Nilakina? To make it happen. Now that's interesting. You help me shed a little salary, salary, I give you a nice piece for the future. Everybody wins. Everybody's happy. We all go to Disneyland to celebrate. I'm more of a Six Flags guy myself. You help me get rid of this salary, and I'll get you on one of those civilian airplanes that goes to space. You want to go to space, Gabe? I'm happy on Earth for the time being, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. If I take Noah, that's it for my cap space this summer. Sure, but you're not signing anyone who's a good, who's a good a fit for you as Nilakina. Guarantee you that. I guess we'll see, won't we? Um, I'm going to need more than just Joakim Noah and Frank Nilakina. To be honest with you, Zachary, I don't love Nilakina. You'd have to give me a lot more than that to take on Joakim Noah. If that's all the deal is, that's all I can give you. Then I'm not going to. Then I'm going to have to give you a polite but firm no. Sorry, Zachary. Appreciate your directness, Gabe. You know where to find me if you change your mind. I'm not going to accept that. Are you kidding me? Get out of here with that, my guy. All right, so we got two weeks left. Thank God. Andrew, what's up? Big news, Gabe. Need to talk to you ASAP, in person. Drop whatever you're doing and get over here now. I'm a little busy, Andrew. Mind telling me what's going on? 
Seattle. It's happening. The owners committee just approved the relocation with a unanimous vote. Locked and loaded, baby. We're all in. Um, why are you telling me this? Why isn't, you know, the owner telling me this? Seattle? What are we doing moving to Seattle when Bob's got cruise lines going under and cinnamon buns he can't pay people to eat? This is insane. Are you messing with me? I'm dead serious, and I've got to say I'm a little disappointed in you. I thought you were a team player, Gabe. I know my dad told you this was in the works, so what exactly is the problem here? The problem is I'm starting to think that all the worst rumors are true. Our priorities are all out of whack. Hey, uh, you know what? Forget the meeting. Something just came up. I thought you said you wanted me to come in. My bad, Gabe. I, uh, I just remembered I got some stuff I need to take care of with my dad. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll catch up later, okay? Sure, okay. Yeah, we'll talk later. Don't worry about it. You want to put some time in your calendar, or... No, that's okay. I'll be in touch. Have a good one, Gabe. Fuck you, Andrew. Uh-oh. What is this? Relocation announcement set for June 6th, right before the final. Still very sensitive, though. Keep quiet until June 6th. Not a word to anyone. Very delicate situation. Why not type very instead of just typing V? Andrew tells me you're not on board with the move to Seattle. Something told me he might do that. I thought we were on the same page, Gabe. What's going on with you? I was just caught off guard, you know. Whatever he told you I said, I want to be unequivocal here. I'm on board with the move. I'm fully invested 100%. So you're fully invested. So that means you don't think this is insane or that I should worry about my cruise lines first. In the interest of open and honest discourse, I think you should know that being fully on board is the exact opposite of what Andrew told me. Are you telling me you didn't mean what you said to Andrew? I was having a bad day. I'm not sure why I lashed out like that. In all honesty, it's probably because I heard it from Andrew first. I would think something as big as this. I would think it would come from you, Bob. It must have poked some old wounds that, you know, maybe I thought they were fully healed, but... Okay, well, you know I'm grooming Andrew, Gabe. At some point, he's got to be trusted with delivering important news. But fine, I'll take you at your word, since you're looking at me in the eye and telling me you're into it. What else can I do? I'm fully committed, Bob. You have my word. But I'm not fully committed. Fuck you, Bob. Fuck you and your son. Your demon son. He's a demon. Thanks for making... Hey, you stole my suit. Thanks for making some time for me, Gabe. I know you got a lot on your plate right now. Don't mention it. It's my job to listen. I wanted to touch base with you. Keep you abreast of the situation, as it were. Did you just say abreast? And what situation is that? It's a go. Define a go. It's not official yet, but the sale's going through. We've got to iron out some details, but it's all small stuff. Dotting eyes, crossing T's, that sort of thing. The fact is, it's happening. Sometime in the not-too-distant future, I'll regain total control of the Bulls. That's great news, Eugene, and quite frankly, I was a little worried when I saw all that basketball stuff in your office. Looked like you were going to lose your mind if you didn't get back in the mix. What can I say? I love this game, playa. I hate to pry, but what still needs to be worked out? I know you said it's crossing T's and dotting I's, but in my experience, T's and I's can cause a lot of problems. Is this a sure thing or what? Well, that's the thing. I was hoping you could help me out a little. Is that right? I have every reason to believe our bid will be accepted. It's a tremendous bid. Bob would have to be out of his mind to turn it down. But I don't want to leave anything to chance. I want to look under every rock, consider every angle, and make sure I didn't overlook something that's going to come back to bite me at the last minute. I see. So the interest of being thorough, I wanted to ask you if there's anything you know that I don't. Anything at all might help me make my big more competitive? Anything at all that can make me feel like I've done my due diligence? Hmm. Is there anything like that that I might not know, Gabe? Uh... Well, guys, I'm going to end this video here. I'm going to, we're going to have the decision in the next video. Hope you enjoyed. I don't know whether to tell them about Seattle or don't tell them anything. Um, the Sandersons are pieces of shit, so I don't, don't really care what they think of me anymore. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you on another time. Peace.